What's up, my ninjas? I'm Strident. And uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about G.I. Joe. <laughs> Probably a lot. So, you know, if you're like me, you're one of the people who may have uh, come into learning about G.I. Joe from the comics. And the comics were really well done. Um, I had more exposure, though, to the TV series, which is like many of the people who are kind of into G.I. Joe as a, a brand. The TV series, though, that really put me over was Resolute. Um, Resolute came out right before Rise of Cobra. It was awesome. It hit the, the nail right on the head as far as the perfect blend of modern military, you know, uh, sensibilities versus the real American hero aesthetic, which is, you know, that, that good bit of sci-fi thrown in for good measure. Um, usually Cobra gets all the sci-fi, whereas the Joes kind of are bare bones, you know, near future uh, military operatives, which is nice, you know, and it, and it really shows you that they have to be on their toes when dealing with a foe that's so advanced, and I love that. Every design had the, uh, uh, kept the integrity of the original, but, you know, like color palettes were still there, um, you know, when you look at uh, Spirit. He's still got the blue, the sky blue shirt with the little red tunic piece and the uh, tan pants. It's just now he doesn't look like he stepped out of a Western, you know? And that's how most of the designs were handled. And if you look at the details, they were different. Um, I usually stick more to the shows because the comics vary in style, especially art. I'm showing you some art by John Boy Myers. He's one of my favorite, uh, you know, comic book artists. He used to ink um, Dan Norton's stuff back in the day when Norton was working on like Gen 13 and a couple other books. But uh, this is not normally the look of the Joe books, which is why I haven't really been into Joe books for a long time. It seems like the art is just, there's just no character. I mean, look how bland this shit is, you know? And so even if there is a good story, you got art like this. I mean, look at how the girls are all sticking their asses out and Flint is in a what kind of, po like Flint is not that guy. There's no need for him to be in that pose. Figures, you know? The figures, there was a point in time where the figures actually looked like they had a lot of thought put into them, you know? Granted, they look a little bit pudgy, but, you know, at the time, that did the job, you know? Nowadays, the figures, for the most part, you get a lot of this crap, where underneath there is some kind of good figure, but form and function just aren't coming together. Snake Eyes wouldn't run around with all that shit, and they know it, but they know that it's just another way to get money off of you. Now, for me, where I really, really, really picked back up G.I. Joe after all the crap that happened in the 90s, it was Rise of Cobra. And for me, Rise of Cobra as a movie was like, ugh. But as a toy line, it was amazing because this is gear in the toy line. In the movie, this was G.I. Joe, and that wasn't cool. Retaliation. You guys know my struggles and my uh, uh, problems with retaliation. Um, too much rock, you know, too much the rock. It, it was too much uh, like a WWE film and not enough a G.I. Joe film. Too many characters. I mean, look at Flint. That doesn't look like Flint, you know, mainly because he's not, he doesn't have his beret. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in the show, he didn't act like Flint either. Um, Rise of Cobra, a lot of people gave it flack for the fact that they changed Ripcord into a black guy, namely Marlon Wayans. I didn't give a shit because... Ripcord was kind of a background character anyway. There were like three or four, maybe three episodes I can remember, and I do have the whole series, maybe three or four episodes where Ripcord actually had a speaking part. And he was another Halo jumper. I mean, you had crazy legs, you had uh, a lot of, like shit, Duke is a fucking uh, airborne paratrooper. You had a lot of that shit. So, you know, another one, it's like, oh well, who cares? This way we got, a uh, uh, comic relief, and he got a personality. I mean, he went so far as to even go after Scarlet, the ungettable get, you know what I'm saying? And that was kind of cool, even though it was poorly handled. Um, another character who got a good makeover was Cobra Commander. 
Cobra Commander in Retaliation actually seemed like a scary dude, whereas Cobra Commander in Rise of Cobra just seemed like, I don't know. <laughs> Storm Shadow was the same way. Storm Shadow was really angry because I think he saw what they did to him in Rise of Cobra and it just wasn't serviceable. So uh, they did a really good job with him in Retaliation. Actually, to me, he was the best part of the film. He went so far to me as to outshine Snake Eyes, who typically always seems to somehow get all the shine time. But the point of me going through all these various eras and styles and whatever, you know, is just to point out that, like, we're all influenced differently when it comes to G.I. Joe. Some fans are just fans of G.I. Joe. Not a real American hero, just G.I. Joe. But fans like this guy here, whom I still don't know his name. I know I got this off of Dial Warriors, and his art is amazing. And at the time, I'm surprised I didn't write down his uh, information. But uh, you can see his lighting, immaculate. His collection, obviously, is pretty damn good. Because he's got some uh, 25th anniversary figures with a uh, 25th anniversary Cobra Commander. And the setup is just awesome. It looks right. He's got an officer there. He's got, you know, several different, uh, you know, the Silver Cobra logos and red logos. And it's crazy. But we're all influenced differently. And it drives us to create these images if we are that kind of collector. You know what I mean? This is my work. The guy you see firing the gun is Solomon Blood, who is a... He's a clone of Major Blood, but he's being raised by Major Blood. So he considers him his son. Um, and this guy's crazy, and that's a creation I came up with. Well, my brother and I came up with. Um, this version was all me. And the thing is, you would have a little bit of that in Cobra. You know, clones. A lot of cloning, a lot of programming, a lot of nanomachines, a lot of sci-fi, you know, elements. And I dig that. Another thing is that, you know, when I say we're all influenced differently, a lot of people hated Rise of Cobra, but one thing I can give it is that it took the character of Heavy Duty and made him his own person. And that's the, uh, I took my cue from Rise of Cobra and made Heavy Duty his own person. Um, I prefer that. I mean, here you had this, this cardboard cut out of Roadblock, but they named him something else. Now you have this character, this ex-British SAS um, member who became, you know, a, a kind of a, a respected, you know, high-ranking member of G.I. Joe. Training Joes using, you know, high-end, you know, more sci-fi-ish weaponry and showing the other Joes how to use it, you know. And, and he just seemed like such a tough, focused dude. And I like that, you know, another character that kind of had the same kind of revamp through Rise of Cobra was uh, Craig S. McConnell, my homeboy, uh, Rock and Roll. Rock and Roll was the first G.I. Joe I ever got. So when I saw this and I learned who he was, I was like, man, I have to get this guy and I want to make him the current Rock and Roll. And I wanted to make him Craig S. McConnell Jr. because he looks nothing like the original, you know. And in my Joeverse, you have, you have uh, several guys pick up, you know, any code name. You know what I mean? So there have been more than one guy codenamed Roadblock or more than one guy codenamed Heavy Duty and so on and so on and so on. And uh, it just works. It adds to the, um, you know, to the... To the the longevity and the skill levels of certain characters and the diversity. Um, certain characters like Flint, my Flint has gray hair, so it's the same guy that you watched in Real American Hero, whereas my Duke is a new guy, essentially, because all my Dukes look a little different. Um, for the most part, though, they're blonde. Here's work from uh, my homeboy, Stephen Arhouse. Um, him and I started Jotographs on uh, Facebook, and uh, he kind of has more of a flair for the the semi-realistic. He doesn't really go overboard with the sci-fi elements, although sometimes his bases kind of have, like he'll have dioramas of Cobra bases that kind of have that feel. But you could clearly see there's a love there for G.I. Joe. Otherwise, he wouldn't sit there and spend the time making these pictures. And uh, sometimes when you see his characters or the characters he chooses to showcase, most of the time, it's pre-existing characters, and they're doing things that they would actually do, which means 
He read his comics, he watched the show, he understood the characters and the characteristics of these individual characters from being exposed to them for so long. And this is something that a lot of fans fail to do, you know? You see a lot of uh, dials where it's just like, what the fuck is going on and why? Or, you know, if you're gonna showcase this stuff, don't you think you should at least be true to the characters? You know, and these are the same people who say movies like Retaliation and Rise of Cobra were just amazing. And it's like, no, just because we got a movie doesn't mean it was good enough. And, you know, same thing with the figures. They're the same ones that buy every figure and say, it's amazing. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's, it's, it's open to interpretation. You can like what you like. But when you review shit, that's where I'm going. When you're reviewing this stuff, you have to be objective. So you have to 100% tell me what this thing in front of you, what can it do and what can't it do? What does it do well and what doesn't it do well? And, you know, when you make your characters, you know, like, for instance, my characters fit, are in the Joe-verse, but they deal with the things that the Joes don't. So when, when aliens show up, when the dreaded Cobra La shows up, when, you know, cyborgs malfunction or androids or whatever robots malfunction and start screwing shit up, they want us to come in and decimate these guys. And that's what I, that was the point in coming up with these guys. You've got these soldiers that are so crazy that the Joes are kind of like, ugh, I don't want to work with them because shit always goes crazy with them, you know? Um, and that's because they were inspired by Contra. I'm a Contra baby. I grew up playing Contra. And a lot of games similar to that, like Metal Slug and stuff like that. So I wanted Joes that they take their guns with their incendiary rounds and they, you know, they handle things, you know, like this picture where they set off uh, some almost uh, nuclear level explosives in a uh, top secret base in Antarctica and they decimated whoever they were fighting, you know. I know it's, you know, some people of alien origin that were kind of hiding out and they discovered the base and they kind of shut them down. But see, that's something that typical Joe fans, quote unquote, would say, that's too over the top. Joes don't fight aliens, man, 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 man. You know what I mean? My guys also rack up a body count, <laughs> as you can see there. Um, and then there's other um, collectors, like this is another person from uh, Dial Warriors that I have no idea who he is. If you guys know who this guy and the first guy I showed you are, tell me who they are so I can, you know, give them props. But look at all those Crimson Guards. I mean, damn. And you can tell he understands. I've seen this uh, panel in comics before. Um, a lot of us know that, you know, there are knockoffs. <laughs> and Cobra Commander obviously won't deal with them. He doesn't like the knockoffs, so he's going to make an example out of them. And that's one of the core from Lennard. And they're not really bad figures. It's just they're not Joes. You know, they need that wrist articulation. But uh, it all plays into giving us more authentic pieces. You know what I'm saying? Because they have to play to their character. For instance, I love uh, Storm Shadow. He's my favorite ninja he's one of my favorite characters if not my favorite cobra period and uh i think he gets a bad rap because people watched the show and then they saw this new movie and they don't understand the character i mean they always just play him out up as just plain old evil and they don't even get into the complexity of his story that was showcased in the comics and i think it does people a disservice because if they learned about that shit, they'd be like, wow, that is beyond interesting and it's jacked up that he's going through this. I would be angry, too. Um, I play Ace Combat a lot. I love those games. My favorite is still Ace Combat Assault Horizon. Even though it's fucking hard, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome, in my opinion. Just so happens the Joes have a pilot called Ace. <laughs> and I found these little planes by Lennard. To take the place of the monstrosities that are the uh, G.I. Joe um, Sky Strikers. And I made my own custom Sky Hammers. And they're smaller. They're a little stealthy because they're darker colored. And they have lights and sounds in them. And I can put the wings back and put the landing gear out. And when I made this image, this is one another of my art. You've probably seen it before. When I made this image, I was thinking, like, I play Ace Combat. Wouldn't it be awesome to just put the Joe shit in Ace Combat? So that's what I did. You got a Cobra Night Raven in the background, you got a Rattler blowing up, and you got a Skyhammer flying right there. 
this is all showcase of what G.I. Joe is and what it means to me. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't understand the idea of G.I. Joe is not that you take these characters and make them quote unquote realistic because we have a real army. These guys are the super heroic versions of our armed forces. You know, one Joe is equal to like a couple fire teams or a battalion of soldiers. You know what I mean? They can do the things by themselves. They can do things that usually take 10 or 20 guys to do. You know, they're the action heroes that like Stallone and Schwarzenegger and all those guys have been playing. But this is their job. This is what they always do. And a lot of folks don't get it. You know, you see customs of real American hero characters kind of looking like normal soldiers, you know. Some of them dressed down like Green Berets or like operators or whatever. You know what I mean? The ones you see on TV or in the games and stuff. And it's like, that's not the personality of these characters. You know, that's not the point. The, the point of these guys is with, ever, with whatever loadout they decide to use, they can take down whatever it is they're thrown up against. I mean, look at Flint. With a shotgun and a pistol, this guy just takes down whatever's thrown in his direction. No body armor, just a shotgun, a pistol, and a bunch of shells and clips. In reality, he'd have to be wearing some kind of vest, some kind of body armor, something, and he'd have to change his loadout depending on what the situation is. But does Flint really do that? Not really. I mean, sometimes he does, but typically, as a character, shoddy, pistol, end of story. Because that's what the Joes do. The Joes are, like I said, super heroic versions of the standard military designations. And uh, a lot of people don't get it. And it, it's one of those things, it's a pet peeve of mine, because I want them to get it. Because if you're going to showcase these characters that I grew up watching and reading and, you know, liking, you need to do a, a, a consistent job, you know, of, of showcasing these guys. I don't want to see... And, and I know it's not all about me, you know what I'm saying? So this is just a pet peeve I have. But I feel like once you start showcasing these things and you're showing it to a mass audience, you need to show that you have a knowledge of these guys and these what they do, because this is your thing, you know? It's, I hate having arguments or discussions about something that's, you know, kind of, you, you, you need to be a fan of it to understand it, or you are, you would have to be a fan to have this discussion and folks don't know what they're talking about, you know? Um, I was in the comic book store the other day and someone was saying how it, it's, it's ridiculous that anyone could ever hit the Flash. I'm like he's a person and he wasn't born with at the speed of sound or moving at the speed of sound. So he doesn't always think like, I'm going to do everything with my powers. Plus, it's kind of like a muscle. You use it, you get tired, you know. But this is the thinking of people who read these things. They think in that kind of fashion. <laughs> and... You know, they, they try to justify their, their sometimes poor thinking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's goofy, it's just comic book stuff, but if you're paying attention, you won't say some certain things. And then if you're going to have a discussion with someone else, thinking as well, you won't say some certain things or do some certain things. And if you're showcasing this, it's your opportunity to show people what you gathered from you know, the source material. And if you're showcasing stuff that characters are not playing to type, um, they're not, their personality is gone, they're not doing things that they could do, you know, you got Cobra Commander humping Lady J. Like, no. Yeah, if it's a joke, I guess it could be funny, but it's like, you know, really? You're showing this, it's one of, this is, this is kind of a community of for us, by us. You know what I mean? And if you're gonna showcase, showcase the right way that's 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 how i feel about it you know i try to do that so i even went so far as to create my own team so that the things that i think are lacking i can showcase that with my own team you know um there's like one other guy up on the the um the gi joe community on facebook that um he has his own team of soldiers of joes or his version of gi joe and um he used the steel brigades and uh, the steel brigade deltas and he put the various Joe's heads on those bodies but then he also tweaked things like changing out the arms and the legs and you know but their vests they all have that beachhead vest you know and for the most part or he found a version of the of a vest that matched the color scheme so he has this really tightly knit 
well-designed team, you know, kind of along the lines of my team. My team wears the Joe Trooper greens. Um, he did a good job making them all fit together. So whenever you see his Joes, they stand out from all the other Joes because they're all wearing a similar uniform with very specific things, character-specific uh, details that separate them. So it's not like retaliation where everybody's wearing what Ultimate Duke was wearing in the beginning of the movie. Instead, they're all wearing similar gear, but just like in the show, they have their little telltale signs that they're separate characters. That's taking the extra time to make your stuff stand out, you know? You look at my team, each character has little things, like Gunman has a side holster for a um, six shooter, and I put that on his web gear, or his vest, you know, because I felt like he needed something else. He didn't need a knife. He needed, he's Gunman, he needs to have extra guns, you know? My team use, uh, for the most part, they all use G18s um, for their sidearms you know and uh some other characters like kill streak uses knives i use uh vector the chris um instead of using the g18s because i'm the team leader you know what i mean i want to have a little something that kind of makes me stand out from the rest um i also have that that heads up display on my guns like um you have in rainbow six because I'm constantly upgrading things. They call me Weaponsmith because I make the weapons. I actually upgrade stuff and make my team more efficient. I was building things, my character was building things for the Joe team. Because one time we had a discussion, who builds everything for the Joes? I was like, well, I'm gonna make my dude one of those guys. Um, but these are like character traits, you know, that people, I guess it's different when you do this as a job. You think about these things, whereas everyone else just does whatever comes to mind. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I love this hobby because, number one, it helped me connect with my stepson. Um, it, it, uh, it gave me, like, this one extra thing to quickly make a... Se it wasn't even a segue. It was just quickly jump in, and it was like both of us could meet on this level. We both like G.I. Joe. It's that simple. Um, it also gave me an outlet, a new outlet for my artistic expression because when you look at these you can tell that I didn't just take a bunch of pictures of my figures and just put them online you know it wasn't one of those corny hall pictures it was me actually you know setting up a shoot and uh, putting things together to make the composition that I wanted and to get across the kind of action that I wanted so that you would get what I wanted to convey to you as an audience you know what I'm saying and uh, I take it seriously, you know? When you do art as a living, some stuff just won't fly, you know? And, you know, a lot of times I, I bitch and I moan and I complain, but it's because I really dig this world, you know what I'm saying? This is a world that I, I really get into. At first, I didn't think I would, and I did for a little while when I was a kid, but then coming back to it as an adult, it's just crazy that still there's areas of this universe that make me you know, interested and allow me to geek out and still enjoy it. You know, that's why it pains me to see them doing such a shitty job with the figures these days, you know? And, you know, to see the movies kind of going in the direction that they're going. But, um, you know, it also pains me when I see other people posting just poorly thought out, poorly done stuff and then getting props for it, you know? There's a lot of people who do customs and yeah, I give them props. They have the balls to do the custom and uh, they have the know-how to finish it. But sometimes thinking of why this would work and like, does this fit the character? That's important too. And that's sorely lacking in most of these customs and it bothers me, you know? Because yeah, if you have technical skill, that's nice. But if you have no vision, then meh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, your technique is all nice, but your vision or your logic, if it's lacking, then you fucked up and no one's, <laughs> I shouldn't say no one is, because these days it seems like that's what everybody pays attention to, but for people like me, we're going to kind of be like, eh. you know what I'm saying? Kind of just meh. So, all in all, I this is, this is very personal, you know? I, I pay attention, I'm looking at it, I'm trying to get into your world as well, because to me, we're all kind of drawing from the same pool, and we need to 
be concise and, and, and not just look like a bunch of grown men just sitting around playing with toys and taking pictures of it all the time, you know? Because, yeah, we do that, but the stuff that you want to show off to everybody should be, like, the shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've never seen anyone do some of the stuff that I'm doing like this. I haven't seen this with Joe's. I haven't seen other people do this, which is why I do it, you know? The Contra stuff, never saw other people do it, you know? Not even, not, and if they did it, I didn't see them doing it to this level, you know? And it's not a technical thing. It's just a, a concept that I'm getting across, you know? And if I could, even if I did it and it was crudely done, the concept would be there and people would be like, damn, that's kind of cool, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and and there's people who do it and I showcase some of those already, you know? So I'm not just tooting my horn, I'm just saying in general. So, you know, I, I just want, I want to see more of that. I hope to see more of that. You know, more of people actually thinking first before they shoot that picture or put together that image. You know, I, I want to see more people uh, paying attention to images that, that don't have snake eyes in them. Because I'm sick and tired of people just, you see a, an image, a poorly shot image of snake eyes fighting ninjas and everybody's like, oh my God, snake eyes is awesome. Like, 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 like. Not that this is done for likes, but I'm just saying, this is how many people have seen it. And then you see a really well done picture, like the one I showed you with uh, the, the big Cobra Commander over the original uh, Joes, and, uh, well, some of the original Joes, and it gets no love. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's stupid. Or that picture with Flint, with the flames in the background. Or even this. It's like the, a picture with snake eyes, you know, poorly posed, fighting a bunch of poorly posed ninjas and poorly shot with no kind of lighting and no thought behind it. Besides, I want snake eyes fighting ninjas because I like him. That's not... Come on. And, and I know this sounds kind of harsh because it's like, hey, we're playing with, with your figures and stuff. But, you know, we're, t we're kind of taking it a little bit further once we turn it into photography because it's art. And it's open to interpretation. And it takes more than just having the figures and having a camera to make this shit work. And I think there's a lot of people out there that actually know what it takes to make it work. And they deserve the props for their work, you know, just just the, the, the acknowledgement of their skill and their time and the fact that they paid enough attention to the subject matter, the source material, to translate it into their own little way, you know what I mean, with, with, with their images and your, your glimpse into their Joeverse, you know? So all in all, that's just a little bit of my, uh, my artistic uh, opinion on the way things have been with the Joes, especially in the fan communities, and you know, it's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, as usual, I'm Schreider. This has been my little uh, insight on my love for G.I. Joe, and uh, hopefully you guys dig it and you understand where I'm coming from. If not, whatever. But uh, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.